<laughs> Tonight's episode is brought to you by the Be Real Podcast Network. For more episodes like this, go to brelnetwork.com. Enjoy the show. Fatality. Hola amigos, and I am back just in time for our top five buddy cop films right here on Basement Condition. See! See. Hello and welcome to the 51st episode of Basement Condition. Last time I checked, I'm Brandon. I'm Kyle. I am definitely Allie. He is definitely Allie and he is definitely back. I'm back. Hello all. Glad to be back. It's good to to see you. you back. (laughs) Thank you. You had a good time in Spain? I had a great time. I haven't walked so much in my goddamn life, but yes, I uh, had a great time. I proposed, she said yes, so I am happily engaged. It was a great time. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So today, top five episode, it was a fun one. Well, most of them are. Some of them are a pain in the ass. <laughs> At first it was really fun, and then when, when you get down to it, it's I like, learned a lot from whoa. this list. <laughs> First thing I learned was that there aren't that many body cop movies. Yeah, mine was kind of thrown together, together, thrown together quite quickly because uh, getting home two days ago, then my car, both of our cars were actually on the on the fritz, so mine was thrown together quite early today. But um, is it weird that when you said fritz, I got the scene from uh, Young Frankenstein in my head? <laughs> You know what? Speaking of that, there was a lot of posters in Spain with um, uh, Igor, oh, like really? his face, and just like I think it was for stand up. So it was people kind of do stand up. So I just got to see his face all over the place. I'm like, yes, Igor. But um, wow. yeah, no, getting uh, doing this list, I might have one or two that are kind of questionable in the buddy cop genre. But uh, yes. Well, that's the thing. I think buddy cop is just kind of a generic term like a loose term, but there are some boundaries in my mind. Like Kyle was mentioning earlier that some people, like online I guess, thought Predator 2 would be considered a buddy cop movie. I don't think it would be. Their explanation for it was that <clears throat> it starts off, he has a bu- a partner, but yeah. an alien comes and starts killing people and fucking shit up. Yeah, I can see that. Is it on your list? Not on my list. Okay. I didn't want to go into the spiel and then you'd be like, (laughs) Predator (laughs) 2. They said it counted on (laughs) mine. But when I think of a buddy cop film, and this is what I, I'm pretty sure it was on Wikipedia, it's basically a pairing of two people with completely different, like, personalities. Like a clashing personality. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, it can stem out of most buddy cop films, at least the really good ones. One of them usually isn't a cop. Usually the cop is stuck with someone. Mm -hmm. Like Last Action Hero, I didn't expect that to be considered Uh, one. And then when I thought of it, it kind of is. It kind of is, but... Taxi, yeah. But I don't know, I guess the class would be like a Starsky and Hutch type thing, right? Starsky and Hutch is one. Right? I don't know if that's on anybody's list. So there are kind of loose... Loosey dangles of what it can right. be. Like I said, mine might be a little loose. <laughs> That's fine. So, who wants to start us off with numero five? Numero five. Cinco. I think. <laughs> My Spanish did Cinco. really not improve the Cinco. entire time I was there. That's I learned okay. how to order Michelle a coffee. Cafe con leche, please. And then they'd say oh, something they say, back to me they in say Spanish. Please in Spanish? No. <laughs> <laughs> then they'd say something back to me in Spanish. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I tried my best. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I don't talk. <laughs> I, I can't do this. Who's go, who's, who wants to go first? I'll Beard, do it. Beard's got his hand right. Beard's going first. I'll get us started here. And you guys probably 
won't find this much as a surprise, but I'll go right ahead with it and say Rush Hour. That's your fifth? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Well, there's one off All my right. very short list. But yeah. Yeah. Bastard. Very much a good buddy cop movie. Came out in 1998. 98? Wow. A while ago, yeah. And of course, it's a trilogy. Mm-hmm. Directed by Brett Ratner. And of course, Ratner. starring Jackie Chan and... Chris Tucker! <laughs> Come on, Lee! Come on! I love that movie. I so good. Love that movie. When that first came out, uh, for those of you who remember back in the day when people had black boxes on their TV. I had one. And you could get uh, the pay-per-view channels. Yeah. And as good and, and dandy as having those channels were, it was just one movie on the channel repeated over and over and over and over, and over, and over again. again. So, when Rush Hour came out, that was one of said movies on said <laughs> channel, on said illegal TV box. And my babysitter had one. So, every day after school, for probably like two months, we watched that movie. So, even now, without watching it, I could probably start saying lines from it. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I still use the, wipe yourself off, man. You, you did. <laughs> yeah, I still love the... Kinda, no. Don't you understand the words that are coming out from my mouth? Hey! Say the word out of my mouth. <laughs> the problem, officer? No problem. Just rush hour. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you ever touch a black man's radio? It's Beach Boys. It's classic American music. Man, a cigarette? That's a weed. <laughs> Man, that's a like weed. for my glaucoma. <laughs> <laughs> Never understood it when I was younger. No, it just passed over the head. Yeah. Hilarious movie. Yeah, so basically, uh, Chris Tucker is LAPD, but he's just a joke cop, and is hired, sort of, by the FBI to take on a special client to li- to be a liaison. Yeah, but of course they're just using him to kind of, uh, what's the word? I guess distract. Uh, distract. Just, thank that's you. the word. Lee. Distract Lee because he's a cop who's coming over to help with a case that involves a kidnapped Chinese missing, yeah, girl. Chinese. And they don't want Lee's help, so they hire him to kind of... I guess throw him off. Distract him. Yeah. And they end, he, Chris Tucker's character ends up finding, about, finding out about the case and wants to do it and is all excited now, even though he knows he's the joke. Mm-hmm. And they go from there. And they clash for a bit. A bit. <laughs> well, the first half, but when they start getting along, especially in the later movies, they're hilarious. Oh, yeah. I don't really remember the third one, but I remember the second one was really good as well. Yeah, they were. Again, just the chemistry worked really well between those two characters. But, uh, no, I don't really remember the third one. Second one's when uh, they get all suited and booted. Um, I forget what he says. Bloy still uses the term all the time. He's like, Oh, what is he saying? No, when they go in and they get uh, all the fancy clothing and stuff like that for the um, the ball for they go over yeah they go yeah. over to the big casino or something yeah. like that, and he just suits him up. He's just like, okay, I, nothing touches me but uh, pure silk and like the crocodile skin and stuff like that. The the it, the spiel he gives is fucking hilarious, and Bloy still does it every now and again when he suits up. He's just like, oh yeah, he does the whole Chris Tucker line. <laughs> Well, apparently, funny. Chris Tucker improvised a lot of his lines Did in that he? film. Oh, he's too good. Which you know, oh, you know, parts hilarious when he shows his uh, ID or his license plate or whatever. Chris Tucker has the afro and the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. and did you know that there were actually two different people that were supposed to be the main roles in that movie? Yeah, Ooh. I think I read that somewhere. I didn't read it anywhere. Who was it supposed to be? Chris Farley <laughs> and Martin Lawrence. I don't know if I like the Martin Lawrence part. Meh. But Chris Farley would be funny in a cop movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he would be. I wonder if that had anything to do with his passing. Pro- probably. Most likely. Um, yeah, good Good. good pick choice. For number five. Yeah. That's off my list. Yeah, I'm kind of slowly replacing here. 
Anyway. All right, you want me to go next? Well, that's the way we seem to work here. All right, numero five <laughs> on my list is Bulletproof. Dodge that one. Yeah? Yeah. I didn't think it was going to be on anyone's no. list. No. Yeah, it was up there. Runner up. Yeah? Yeah. I didn't even know Definitely. this movie existed for the longest time. And I went through like a big Adam Sandler phase when I was younger and still didn't really know about it. Okay, I, I can picture the... Oh, uh, you don't know what I'm talking about? I can picture the cover in my head now. I haven't seen it. You've never seen it? I don't think I've seen it. Oh, it's a funny it movie. Now. So, it stars Adam Sandler and Damon Wayans. And Damon Wayans is an undercover <laughs> cop who... I forget what Adam Sandler does. He's, he's a drug dealer, basically. Is he a drug dealer? Yeah, and he basically... And he's connected to a bigger... And his and trust. He's, yeah, and Adam Sandler is connected to a bigger drug dealer. I think it's the bad guy from Speed. No, it's uh, James... James Caan? The, the dad from Elf. Oh, right, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so Damon Wayne's been undercover, and when the raid happens, him and Adam Sandler have a showdown... And Adam Sandler's pissed because, like, they're, like, us close as best friends. And then all of a sudden this happens. So he's pointing a gun at him. And Adam Sandler gets hit in the head by something and accidentally shoots him in the head. Oh, shit. And then he gets, like, a metal plate and is all, like, stern and doesn't... I don't think he really... it's, It's foggy, all the shit that he's done undercover. But then he's stuck with Adam Sandler again. So that the relationship kind of rekindles and shit. But it's one of those, like, Adam Sandler through most of the movie is on, like, a chain, like, and uh, handcuffs oh, okay. because he's, like, just following right. him and shit. Right. But there's <coughs> one escorted, essentially, yeah. to witness protection, I think, or something. Yes, that's it. And there's just one really funny scene when they're in the hotel. Yeah. And there's porn on the TV somehow. I don't know uh-huh. how because Adam he's, Sandler's... No, they're in a motel or something. I like know, that, but Adam yeah. Sandler's chained up to the oh I think Damon Wayans is like watching a movie and passes out and then later on like porn comes on the channel and <laughs> Adam Sandler's stuck in the bathroom like handcuffed around the toilet and then of course bad guys start shooting them up and they have to get away <laughs> it's hilarious alright well I gotta put that on my list to watch came out in 1996 ooh yeah a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of the ones on my list are decently old one or two are kinda new but well, yeah, I think yeah. 80s and mostly 90s were the prime, like, buddy cop era. Because a lot of movies, too, in the nine, like later 90s and early 2000s, I find, were just buddy movies as well, like Shanghai Noon and shit. Yeah, which they were just kind of together for, to be together. It was Yeah, it was pretty much a, it's a wild, buddy cop wild basis. West, in a sense, like yeah. a western buddy cop movie. So, yeah. Bulletproof. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Good stuff. Um, all right. Has a full eight percent approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, so get on it. <laughs> Must have been flying off the shelves, huh? Well, it grossed twenty two point six million dollars, so. Okay. Well, not th- not that bad. All right. It's Rotten Tomatoes, right? I mean, people are starting to petition to get the site taken down, which is a little too much, people, but <laughs> just don't listen to them. All right. All right. Here we go. This is where uh, my little kind of go off the... the yeah, it's the, getting let's, loose. Let's see. Yeah, that's, that's the word. It's getting a little loose here for my number five. People. Men in Black. Whew. Yeah, that's Buddy Cop. Yeah. It's a government agency. Yeah. Which... Well, he was a cop before being recruited. Exactly. He was... Uh, and that was on, like... the NYPD. NYPD. Like, when you go on Google and type in, like, movies from 1984 or buddy cop films, there's usually a tab right at the top of Google mm-hmm. that you hit. Yeah. And, it's, and it's that's usually what I go by, because it's usually the most known ones. And right. that was Accurate. on there, so... Yeah. That's what I figured. It was, it, it, it's pretty good. Um... The Dude. first one I love. Oh. First Men in Black? It's my favorite. It's my favorite one. <laughs> Cause well, the, I haven't uh, seen the newest one yet. Well, that's one of those the series. I No, I haven't seen it, but the, the original guy, like the big cockroach bug yep. guy, he was fucking creepy when I was He's a the kid. He's the kingpin. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. And Daredevil. Oh, look at that. Uh, Crazy, Vincent eh? D'Onofrio. I didn't know until he pointed it out. Was it you yeah. that pointed it out to me? I was just like, no fucking yeah, way. 
You're like, yeah, that's Did the... not look better. Yeah. <laughs> he was Did you cr- know he's Thor in Adventures in Babysitting? I think I, I saw that somewhere. Yeah? Like, when I looked it up, when you told me about the Daredevil thing. Mm-hmm. Cause he's so much bigger. Yeah. Like he's a big he's dude. He's a big guy. <laughs> well, in Men in Black, he doesn't look big. He looks he just pretty looks normal. Tall, like but farmer. Yeah, yeah. Just. <laughs> but he used to creep me. <laughs> farmer. <laughs> he used to creep me the fuck out when I first saw that movie. Cause when did that come out? Ninety. Uh, Ninety-eight. No, oh, sorry. Ninety-seven. Oh wow! Wow, I was off. Hmm. Whoa. I thought it was later than that. Wow. Ninety-seven. So starring Tommy Lee Jones, Will Smith, um, yeah, Vincent D'Onofrio, Rip Torn, uh, Linda Fiorentino. That the one. That's the one from Dogma, right? I believe so. We can believe all we want, but yeah, um, alien refugees live in secret on Earth, disguised as humans. Men in Black, the secret agency that polices these aliens, protects the Earth from you know threats. From the fucking aliens. And so one you of those can aliens here, is a but... big fucking cockroach that's creepy and... Yeah. Eats sugar water. <laughs> lots I'm and sorry. lots of sugar water. Water. Is that your Water. Sugar. Um, more. Uh, more. More. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that um, actress, I don't know who she is, but she plays the perfect, like... Uh, or like toma or comatose <laughs> toma coast <laughs> <laughs> she's really good at that kind of like when they find her and she's just like sitting there like yeah, just something's messed up her mind, husband, yeah. yeah bad for for being 97 that movie is held strong and definitely my favorite out of the three which is usually the case with trilogies mm-hmm. um well like a lot of trilogies <laughs> especially from the seven or 70s <laughs> Time to wake up, Brandon. Long day at work, but come on. Um, I find the first one was almost more adult. Like, for another example, Blade. Right. The first Blade movie is, like, not a kid movie. No. Like, it is bloody, and you see when they bite and stuff, but then the second and third are kind of like... They get, because, yeah, well, they're, even the they're second pulling one more from the franchise CGI. and stuff like that, right? Get well, the video yeah. games in there. Actually, the first yeah. Blade game wasn't that bad, if I remember correctly. I don't think I ever I played the Blade game. Playing, yeah. I'm pretty sure I had it. Must have been on PlayStation. But yeah, the same Most with likely. Men in Black. I find the first movie had more... Like, it was more of a kid's movie, but it just mm-hmm. felt more... But even when he's flirting adult. with, like, the person that worked at the morgue, like, the the chick and stuff, like, yeah. Yeah. Very adult. Yeah, but then you had Frank the Pug. <laughs> The uh, alien disguised as a dog, the informant. Yeah, this dude, definitely looks like an alien. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, at the end, K tells Jay that he's not been training him as a partner, but as a replacement. K bids Jay farewell before he neutralizes him, as per his request. K returns to his civilian life, and Laurel becomes Jay's new partner. L. Wow, that's really Even hard. Even though I don't think you see her again in the second. No. Oh, no. No. Tisk tisk. Yeah, so it was kind of. I, it could have led into that, but it, yeah. you know, they just went the different way with the second one. Oh, Tommy Lee Jones isn't dead yet. You want to be in another Men in Black? Yeah. Right, let's write him in. <laughs> we didn't neutralize him. As for his request. Yeah, no. But yeah, no, that, 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 Wow. Good, good fucking movie. It is a good movie. Are we on numero cat? Cuatro? Four. Cuatro. Si. <laughs> See, my Spanish has not improved any. I'm better than you. Well, let's not go that far. <laughs> Give me something. <laughs> All right. Beardo. Number four. Training day. Oh. Training Day. That was a good movie. I didn't even think of that one. Mm-hmm. Good movie, but uh-huh. it ain't on my list. Yay. No? No, it's not. Well, well, I, when did it come out? 2001. Right on. Yep. Stars Denzel Washington, Ethan Hawke. Mm-hmm. I love him in that movie, Denzel Washington. Oh, yeah. Awesome Such role. a badass. Yeah. 
Not that he really needed a movie to make him more badass, but that movie definitely did it. it just stops the car and starts making him smoke. What was he making him smoke again? Like, pretty much crack. PCP? PCP, yeah. Angel dust? Yeah, just like, Jesus. <laughs> All right. He's got a fucking, like, gun to your head, pretty much. Like, okay, I guess yeah. I'm smoking this. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, he's a narcotics, training to be a narcotics... Officer. Yeah. Right. Detective or whatnot. Stick or whatever his name is from Daredevil is in that movie. Yeah, he's the uh, big druggie saving up for retirement that they ended up raiding. Yeah. Right. And they kill him, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. He has the paper and he's got the guns. Yeah. He's like, drop him. He's like, all right. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. I can't, like, I, I haven't watched that movie in forever. You, oh, you no, I again, 2001. Yeah. That's pretty much... Almost the last time <laughs> you the watched last it. Times I watched it. I watched it a couple but years ago, I think. Do you have my guy showing it to someone? It? Um, it's, it's been a while. Uh, two LAPD narcotics officers over a twenty-four hour period in the gang-ridden neighborhoods of uh, South Central Los Angeles. Um. One like, of them's a rookie. It's his first yeah, it's day a, on yeah, the job. Yeah, it's Ethan Hawke's, like, first day training and stuff. And, right. like, you know, before he goes, he kisses his wife, first pregnant wife, and, you know, kid and stuff. And Denzel ends up being a dirty Setting cop. Setting him right. up. Like, the right. dirty yeah, cop. Yeah, because he apparently messed with, like, the wrong Russian mobster or something. So now well, there's, like, a hit out on his head or He's something. been such a dirty cop for so long that everyone is pretty much, like, sick of his crap. Right. And he mm-hmm. just takes advantage of it. Like, yeah. at the end of the movie, when they're in a showdown... He lives in, like, a crime-ridden area, just, yeah. like, for the fact. I think he's, like, Well, I'm pretty sure San face. Andreas is basically, like... Yeah, that's what it reminds me of. Yeah. Pretty but much at the, the end, every, all the neighbors come out and see Ethan Hawke uh, beating the crap out of him or getting close to it, and they don't do anything. They're right. like, well, fuck, do it. Like, mm-hmm. Because then, like, the moral of the movie is, like... It might have been good to have, like, a dirty cop at first, but, like, now he a real cop is here, and I'm actually going to be protecting you. Like, yeah, yeah, as opposed to taking advantage. Yeah. Like, he set right. him up and tried you to get him cops. killed and stuff, and, like, the one Latino uh, drug lord or gangster found his niece's wallet on him, and he's like, right, where'd you get right, this? Right, he's right, like, right. oh, I helped her. She was... Being getting raped, getting raped yeah. or about to get raped in the alley and stuff. And I oh, the her. first time I saw that, I was just yeah. like on the edge of my seat at that part because they're like right about to kill him. Yeah, and then holy fuck, then they're just like, yeah, one second. They like phone his niece, and of course she's not going to say anything right, right away. So yeah. that was even more nerve wracking. Yeah, and then and then he's like, no, what happened today? And she's like, yeah, I got yeah. this white cop saved me, and then he's just like, you got lucky. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Good fucking movie, yeah. Most of the movie, you're just like, oh shit, oh shit, oh mm-hmm. shit. You got that feeling. Well, I mean, yeah, he jumps off the roof of a house onto his car just to, like, stop him. After already, like, getting the shit kicked out of him yeah. pretty much. He's like, you know, I'll drag you back to fucking the police station <laughs> if I have to. Nice. I'm pretty sure as well, uh, someone else was supposed to play Denzel Washington's role. Oh, fuck that. I- I don't know. Who was it? Wasn't it supposed to be not Will Smith? No. But uh, Dirty Cop. Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Would have been a bit of a different tone, but that would have worked. It would have worked. I still like just it the way it, was, it is. Yeah. Maybe because it was two thousand one. Like he hasn't been so overdone. Back Toby then. McGuire was. Uh, Oh, dear. Considered for oh, the part of dear. Officer Jake Hoyt? No. No, not at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, definitely a good movie. Um, I, gotta, I, I think I had it on DVD, whether it's still in my random collection or sitting in a box in my mom's place. Who knows? But I'll stream that shit. Do it up. It's a good movie. Yeah. Uh, it's excuse- Wow. Excuse me. Pardon me. That was You're a right there? chocolate milk burp there. Oh. Um, yeah, we moving on? Are we moving on? Beardo? Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Nacho. Nacho. Uh, number four. 
I'm gonna go with last action hero. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Getting loose. I saw this in theaters, and I think it's a great movie because number one, I love Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. We know. Number two, <laughs> this movie pretty much makes fun of the genre of action movies. Like, you got the one part where the kid's in the movie theater, or Please. The, the movie store, and he look, he's, like, trying to convince Arnold, like, no, you're not a cop, you're an action star, and he runs over to the action section, and it's a uh, billboard of the Terminator 2 cover, and it pan- it's panning up, and it gets to the face, and it's still Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> and then... Of course, Arnold pokes fun, walks around the corner, is like, what? It's his best movie. It's his best role. <laughs> and the one, the one scene in the car chase or whatever, they go off the jump or whatever, and then in the background, he sees the van go up, it's like, <laughs> like, flip over and blow up. <laughs> Released in 93. Yeah, I watched that movie quite a bit when I was younger because it, it used to be on TV quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I think so, yeah. Um, and do you know who? Remember, you know who plays his daughter? Remember who played his daughter in that movie? No. Wasn't it fucking uh, Veronica Corningstone or whatever? Oh, I think you're right. Yeah, from Billy no, Madison. Veronica Vaughn or whatever. Yeah, Veronica Billy Vaughn. Yeah, I was gonna Veronica say Veronica Vaughn. Her. I'm pretty sure that actress played his daughter. No, Corningstone or whatever you said is from uh, Anchorman. Anchorman. Yeah. yeah. Stay classy there. <laughs> so the film, if you haven't seen it, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is Jack Slater, a uh, fictional L.A. police detective. <clears throat> and this kid who is a big fan of his movies and stuff gets given this magic ticket that lets him go he into the movie. He got a golden ticket. He got the golden, golden ticket. ticket. And that's what it always used to remind me of, too. He one? found a Willy Wonka ticket. <laughs> that's the one where the chief is yelling at him so much, you can see like the steam coming out yeah. of his ears and stuff. Yeah. And every time he leaves the office, the glass smashes or something. And they yeah. even poke fun of buddy cop films right in that scene because every cop has a partner in that. And remember, one of them even has a cartoon cat oh, yeah. Yeah. as a partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it doesn't. He's the one that like finds him at the end or whatever. Get an ambulance. <laughs> And the the villain in that, I forget if he had a name or not, uh, but he used to scare the crap out of me the with, the face tre- with the trench coat and... No, not... Oh, yeah. the, <laughs> I was going to say Sorry, not guy. the main villain, one of the lesser known villains. He gets hired by the guy yeah, with the... Yeah, he's just like in the rain, uh, raincoat. Raincoat, and he has that axe oh, yeah. that he like puts together and shit. Yeah, he was creepy. I think it's the same actor who plays... Uh, that creepy subway ghost in Ghost. Ghost. Yeah, you're right. Is it? I believe so. Because he's the first thing that I pictured when I just thought about it came to mind. I've yeah. got someone in my head, but I can't yeah, put we, faces we've to names. Ghost. Yes, you have. While making your own pottery. So yeah, great movie. Absolutely. It just I love it because it just pokes fun at everything, and I've... Adore movies that do that. You adore them. I adore them. Well, that and there's nineties, yeah, early nineties action movies are just awesome. And yeah, Charles Dance plays the the villain with the glass eye. Ah. Uh, he's actually he's actually an assassin. Assassin. And he ends up crossing over to our world, and then Arnold Schwarzenegger has to go after him and all that shit. Yeah, in and out and in and out. Well, it's so loose, right? We're keeping it loose, so. Yeah, I yeah, know, it's good. It's good, it's good, it's good. It's good. It's good. Um, yeah. And well. it's also Art Carney's last appearance in a motion picture. Art Carney? Yeah. Um. Couldn't tell you. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm glad we're all on that page. <laughs> I just thought it was an interesting fact. Is it an interesting fact? Yes. Uh, uh, oh, he was in the Honeymooners. Uh, Harry and Tonto. <laughs> <laughs> this might be Harry why. What? This might be why he's been acting since forty-one. So I think a lot of his movies are 
Yeah, from the 70s and stuff. I wonder who he was. Where's 93? Frank. Is that Is the bad that guy? Is he that old mobster guy that he ends up shooting or getting shot in, in the pool or something? Oh, maybe. But I'm going to know in a second because my phone is just that cool. <laughs> I think you're right. Oh, no, he's the guy who's friends with Arnold Schwarzenegger and he gets... He dies because there's a bomb. Yeah, yeah. There's a bomb. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, if you haven't seen it and... Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, get on it. It's good times. It's good mm -hmm. times. Good. And I actually had an action figure from it of Arnold Schwarzenegger, which was exciting because it was just Arnold Schwarzenegger with jeans and a red shirt and <laughs> cowboy boots on. <laughs> so him and his everyday it. wear. Yeah. <laughs> good figure. <laughs> get home. <laughs> How did you know he was in there? <laughs> so, there's always one hiding in there. <laughs> oh, he's always good for a one-liner. Oh, he's the king of one-liners. He is. Um, all right, are we moving on to me? Yeah, so moving number on. Number four. Number four. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. You I are. drank that coffee too fast again. <laughs> Getting all sweaty and hyper. Okay. I'm going with Blue Streak. Really? Yeah. All right. You guys don't remember Blue Streak, really? <laughs> I remember, no, I remember it, it. You don't like that movie? It's fucking it was hilarious. Good, but... It's all right back then. Okay. Well, I'm going Sorry. with Blue Streak. Fuck you guys. Well, okay. you guys. Who was his partner? I don't remember. Um, Luke Wilson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, He's yeah. He's like, like the really green newbie cop that was just, well, shouldn't we be doing this by the books? And just like, nah, come on, we can do this. And That's just, one with the diamond, right? Yeah, yeah, so Miles Logan is a jewel thief who uh, just hit the big time by stealing a huge diamond. However, after two years in jail, he comes to find out that he hit the diamond in a police building that was being built at the same time at the robbery. In an attempt to regain his diamond, he poses as an LAPD detective. And yeah, because the abandoned building he puts, he hides it and ends up being a cop shop. Yeah, because yeah, they, they the building was just being built. But yeah, of all things, he goes in trying to get uh, get Go access. Figure. And he's, he goes in as the pizza guy with the big fake teeth in there. Okay, I need to take this up to homicide. It's the big fat guy. He's sitting there. He's just like, well, I don't see anything for up there. Why don't you just leave it here with me? No, no. You see, the last time I did that, the, the, everything got eaten. That's like leaving me with a whole bunch of candy. I'm going to eat it up. <laughs> the, yeah. the, 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 the Dave Chappelle's in it as well. Who is he in it? He's just his random... Um, like, like one of the thief buddies, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's just like, oh, the, you, this guy's so bad. I've seen him uh, go up a guy's ass and rip his lips off or whatever. <laughs> and just like, show him the move, Kenny. Show him the move. <laughs> Good. So yeah, that's where he just I remember drops that. his guts. He just drops his guts out. All over there. Yeah, all all over there. Yeah, Martin Lawrence is pretty uh, pretty funny in that movie. I'm not. I haven't seen. Too much to well besides you know bad boys good movie another big mama says big mama yeah i yeah, thought that yeah. would be on your list before blue streak unless that's another one that's uh, on your list i haven't seen it in a long enough time and i made this list very shortly but blue streak i remember i watched a lot when i was a kid i just i loved the comedy in it and just luke wilson's dumbass fucking just oh, oh it, he's oh, probably I'll the reason it, i don't it, like it that much really because yeah like i was like yeah, Luke Wilson could be funny, and then now he's like this secondary like loser cop. I yeah, I guess so. But that I was kind know. of, I guess, was... young in his career. But well, that was around the same time as old school, wasn't it? Mm, no, a I little think old school before. Was... Yeah, no, this was in '99, so I don't. Oh, know, wow. I don't know when old school was. Old school, no, old was school I think, was, like was early 2000s, 2000s, yeah. or 2003. So yeah. did you know that in the scene where Martin Lawrence? is on the PA yelling at the car in front of him. Yeah. It's the same car from the Big Lebowski that the dude drove. No way! Yeah. Love the dude. I know. <laughs> that's why I thought you'd like that fact. Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's another couple funny scenes when he's he's got to take... It, it, 
going to the last like heist scene almost. Um, he's got the the undercover guy with him, and the guy that's taken is the bad guy. But for some reason, they've got to treat him really nicely. You know, treat my client really nicely. Oh, okay. Uh, you can't touch me. Just grabs his head, smashes it off the fucking steering wheel. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think oh, that what? part was actually shown in the trailer, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I would. I be remember surprised. weird shit. Yeah, like it's that true. For some reason. Even if movies I've never seen before, if people are like, "Have you seen this movie?" and if I remember the trailer, I'll be like, "No, nah, but I I remember it," because like the trailer will actually come back to me. <laughs> weird. <laughs> Uh, apparently, according to Dave Chappelle, there was a scene that was written during filming, which his character was, uh, was supposed to wear a dress while disguising as a prostitute. Um, he was supposed to? Yeah. Oh, that would have been funny. Yeah, apparently Chappelle refused, though. The writers complained that the producers then tried to convince Chappelle to do the scene, but he still refused. Uh, he felt that it was kind of part of a disturbing trend, which African-American men wear dresses in films. Um, there was plans to do a sequel that never happened, which... I don't know, it, it ended pretty well, so they could have gone with a sequel, but I think they, they left it pretty well, how they did. Just him leaving for, was it Mexico or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a big decent drive. movie. Maybe that's what it was, it was a big drive for the border at the end, right? Yeah, it was a decent movie. Like I said, it, it made my list in a very short amount of time, so... it We'll it, forgive you. Well, yeah. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Counting down, we are on number three. Three? Mm-hmm. Sorry, there's a question mark on the teleprompter. Three? <laughs> number three. And it's your turn. This one's probably going to be a weird one to you guys, but I'm going with the Jackie Chan one, Super Cop. Super Cop? Which one is that? Who's he teamed up with? Uh, M- Michelle... Yo, I believe she's the one that's in Crouching Tiger, Hitting Dragon. Okay. Like the main female in that one. Because I think is that an American and... movie or is that? It's a uh... one of his older ones. Is this oh, I I Police reckon... Story Three Super Cop is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, North. Of... I recognize the cover. Yeah, I, d- I definitely Police recognize Story the 3, cover, but but Super Cop here in North America. It's in 1992. So is it actually the third movie of a series then? In Japan or wherever? Well, it says here, uh, Jack reprises his Kevin Chan K. Ku character, huh. a Hong Kong cop from Police Story and Police Story 2. So I guess so. It is the first in the Police Story series not to be uh, directed by Jack Chan. Of course, it goes on to be in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Hmm. See, I'm learning so much from this list. I never would have I feel known. like I've seen this movie, You've but... You've probably seen it when okay. you were younger. I used to be a pretty big Jackie Chan fan. Well, it's yeah, one of his days, newer so. movies. Not new, newer, but it's... Mm-hmm. But 92. I just always loved Jackie Chan because he did, like, all of his own stunts and the man's well, broken it. everything in his yeah. fucking body. I watched this when I was watching, like, Rumble in the Bronx, Operation Condor 1 and 2, and, like, uh... Jackie Chan's First Strike and Mr. Nice Guy, all those movies, you know. Hmm. Uh, all them good ones. But yeah. Jackie Chan's hilarious. Apparently, pa- yeah, apparently Quentin Tarantino stated in an interview that if the Earth was going to be destroyed and he could launch one piece of film into space to preserve it for aliens, it would be the final action scene in this movie. That's saying a fucking lot coming from Quentin Tarantino, I'd say. Hmm. I'd say, I'd say, I'd say. Wow. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think I've seen, I, I definitely think, I definitely think I've seen this. But I can't say 100%, just definitely. Anything else, Beard? No, it was just, <laughs> no, the Jackie no. Chan movie had pretty lots basic, of fighting. And... Pretty basic uh, plot from what I can see. He teams up with a female... Chinese counterpart to stop a Chinese drug gang. <laughs> a very basic kung fu plot line that seems to, uh, it was one of his highest, or I think it was his highest grossing film in Taiwan or something. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. It did very well. Mm-hmm. I have to say so. You go, Jackie Chan. 
Go check your body. I don't think I've seen it, though. Like, even looking at pictures and stuff, but I, I recognize the cover for sure. Some weird like that. Yeah. All right, then. Good pick. Thank you. It's my go now, isn't it? It is. You are figuring this circle thing right out. Hey, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm <laughs> getting it. Let's... I'm going to go with Hot Fuzz. Oh, I, knew, I was waiting for that to make an appearance on your listo. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I was. Well, it was made in 2007. Well, well probably like 2006, but it was released in 2007. All right, all right. It is the second movie in the Cornetto trilogy. Yeah. Thank you for my present, by the way. Yeah. Ali brought me back a Cornetto wrapper. wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been hard to bring the whole comb back. Yeah. And I'll explain it because you might not know what that is. A Cornetto is basically a drumstick. Ice cream like cone. Like ice cream cone. That we have here, but there it's called Cornetto. And Hot Fuzz is part of the Cornetto trilogy, which consists of Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and At World's End. At World's End. Uh, Hot Fuzz is about an exceptional London cop, Nicholas Angel, who is involuntarily transferred to a little English village and paired with a weightless new partner. A witless new partner. I was gonna say weightless. weightless. <laughs> Uh, while on the beat, Nicholas suspects a sinister conspiracy is afoot with the residents of the wee little English town. Yeah, for the greater good. The greater good. The greater good. It and was it's just... got all your classic scenes in it, like the montage when they're suiting up and getting all the guns and shit. I just love it because of the, the switch in character roles from Shaun of the Dead where Simon Pegg's this really like oh, ah, eh, like finally by the end of the movie he starts growing a pair but then in this movie he is just Mr. Kickass the entire movie you're like really? Yeah. Simon fucking Pegg? Super cop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's riding around he's got the shotguns crossed over his shoulders riding the fucking horse. Like are you kidding me? So I good. Just, it was hilarious. Uh, I love the scene where he's Jumps over one fence, jumps over the other fence, flips over the last <laughs> fence, like, keeps going. Nick Frost is like, all right. All right. <laughs> he goes and he just goes to the fence. <laughs> <band, like, laughs> belly flops. I right. wish they didn't show that in the fucking commercial. Though. Yeah, I know. Because Those uh, are the little this references. movie is written by Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright and directed by Edgar Wright. And... It's one of those things where they like to use little jokes within all of their things. Right. Like, there's one part in Shaun of the Dead where his pen's leaking, so everyone keeps saying, you got red you on got you. got red on you. That comes from Simon Pegg's, the first show he was in, um, Spaced. One of the residents is a painter, and he's just covered in paint. <laughs> and Simon Pegg's like, you got blue on you. <laughs> And then how they, uh, every time they run into the other groups, oh, so how you doing? Oh, surviving. Yeah. You know, they do that continuously throughout the movie. And there's a Cornetto scene in every movie. Every movie. In the Shaun of the Dead, Simon Pegg runs to the corner store to get shit, and that's one of the things he has to get. In Hot Fuzz, I think they buy it again. I think they're just eating them in the car or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and then in... At World's End, it's a rapper blowing in the wind. I think it just gets caught Which, on something. Which, that's the rapper I was trying to find you, but I think they've changed their rapping since then, so I was... I traveled far and wide for that Cornetto rapper. Still a Cornetto rapper. I know, I tried so hard not to rip it. <laughs> but yeah, one of the jokes in Shaun of the Dead is that they're all jumping over the... fences, fences or whatever. Yeah. And Come on, you've never hopped a fence before. And he just... The fence just falls over. So in this one, he actually is able to jump over the fence, and then Nick Frost is the one that goes through it. And then they do it again in At World's End, I think, but I forget what happens. Yeah, I can't remember. I've only, I think I've only seen that at the theaters when we went. I think I've seen it twice, and I believe I have it. I should watch it again. It's you a good movie. It's it an again. awesome trilogy. And it's not your typical trilogy. We've talked about this before. Each movie is just connected from those Cornetto rappers. It's more of a genre trilogy. And, yeah. Well, and one thing about it, too, I found funny when I realized uh, that, like, dark guy or whatever, like, the big, like, dopey guy in it, that's Hound from Game of Thrones. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Because it used to bug me for the longest time when I was watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> and then I watched Hot Fuzz one time, and then... Well, he... Bilbo Baggins is in Hot Fuzz as well. Like, from The Hobbit. Yeah. Martin Freeman. Uh, Bill Nye is in it again. He's the stepfather from Shaun of the Dead. Oh, yeah, right. So, you weren't here Monday. No, I was not. Well, you were, but you weren't here. Uh, yeah. So, we were talking about Amazon just picked up the new Tick show for a full season. Sweet. You, 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 you know who plays the Tick? Who? Pete. Really? Yeah. <laughs> With an, like good. a thick American accent. Yeah. And that was good. bugging me, too. Until They're so he... good at that. They're so good at that. That'll be hilarious. I'm muchly looking forward to this. Even though, you know, Putty was great as the tick. He was. This one's going to be a lot more, like, bigger budget, though, so they're going to be able to actually use their powers and stuff. Sweet. So, yeah, I think we're going to move on now. Good stuff. All right. It is me. It is you. Going with the other guys from 2010. Nice. Will Ferrell and uh, Marky Mark. Marky Mark. Marky Mark. But also the random buddy cop for about 10 minutes of the movie. Oh, yeah. Um, Isn't it The Rock? The Rock. And uh, why can't I think of his name at the moment? I can't even think it's Samuel L. Jackson, sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's who it is. Yeah, Samuel L. Jackson and The Rock at the beginning. They're just the complete gung-ho just like yeah what were they driving they go through like eight cars in one week and you know the guy only had like uh two grams of weed on did you really need to destroy 30 million dollars of the city it's like yeah but we got him huh but anyway and then they they end up jumping they end up off just the like <laughs> aim for the bushes all right because they think they're fucking made of steel they just jump off and they kill like themselves like a building yeah, yeah. So that puts um, two Mitch, Mitch match, mismatched New York City detective together, which would be Will Ferrell, Marky Mark. I think they're hilarious together. Will, oh, Will Ferrell's Will Ferrell role in is that just is, he's, he's priceless. Like a little pussy. Yeah, he's just an absolute little bitch, but he has the the hottest wife and ex wife and any sort of woman that goes near him. Um, but yeah, so bye, Jenny. Yeah. Hi. Right. Okay, see you later for Bye Jenny. Bye. Okay, I said I said goodbye. Bye Jenny. <laughs> see you later, Jenny. Bye, Terry. Bye. Um yeah, because Mark ends up well, in his past he he shot Derek Jeter. The baseball player. I know you guys don't oh, watch a lot of that, baseball. That's why it rang a bell. That, <laughs> that's why I'm getting this blank <laughs> dead fish look. Derek Jeter, he shot him, and uh, Alan Gamble's reluctancy to take risks, which would be Will Ferrell, lands them together, and then they get put on the chase. And, uh, it's just like, you know, I've never actually put my foot down all the way. What? <laughs> Do it. America! <laughs> drives, smashes in, drives over the dead body, blows up the cocaine all over the car. We're in a cocaine-covered Prius. Wow, that uh, came out in 2010 already. I know. Time, Time flies. Fucking going quick once you pass 25, man. Shh. What? You don't mention how it, like, past 25. I'm still 24 in my head. You can <laughs> keep thinking whatever you want, but I hate to say, you're a oh. little past that. Michael what? Keaton was funny in that movie, too. He was the main police guy. What do they chief? call him? The chief. Oh, the chief. Yeah, chief he was hilarious police. when he was... Uh, he was a hard ass in it, right? Yeah, he keeps making all the S-clubs... Or no, not the... Uh, the um, um, he keeps saying, like, creep, creep. I have and, no idea what you're talking about. Oh my god. He keeps making the fucking ridiculous references to the old uh, girl band. What are the. S Club 7? No. Spice Girls? No. Those are the only girl bands I can come up with. Oh god. I don't know. What other girl bands did you listen to? 
ABC? T- TLC. <laughs> Yeah, TLC, and he just makes these obscure TLC references. I remember that now. And, just... and then he's being a hard ass, but then he asks them, like, was that good? Yeah, and then he is being a hard ass, but then he goes, they, he has, like, a second job at Bed Bath & Beyond or something like that. <laughs> I love Michael Keaton. Hey, Captain. You don't have to call me Captain here. The movie was <laughs> fucking priceless when he just starts going off on Will Ferrell he's just like even the way you pee it's feminine the way your urine hits the bowl if I were a lion and you were a tuna I would swim out to the friggin ocean and freaking eat you and then Will Ferrell just turns it around a, a lion in the middle of the ocean come on now we usually travel in packs you know th- th- four or five large tuna you have no chance and then once we'd have a taste, we'd have a taste for lion. We want more lion. We'd we'd uh, we'd swim closer to shore and devise a breathing mechanism with kelp. You know, it wouldn't be for for days at a time, but you know, a half hour, forty five, long enough to scope out our prey and come back. Fucking hilarious. There you go. How'd that work out for you? You're outnumbered now. He just pours coffee on his lap. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, funny movie. Uh, doesn't he have, like, a fake gun? Yeah, the, they take his gun away, and they give him, like, a wooden gun. And then even that <laughs> gets stolen from him. And then they, when they give it back, it's got, like, a shine on him. You might want to send them a, send them a thank you card or something like that. It's just like, it's a wooden gun. What are you going to do with that? Smacks him in the face. Oh, man! <laughs> Apparently it was Will Ferrell's second highest grossing film worldwide after Elf. No way. Wow. Wow. Well, random, eh? Yeah. Maybe because Marky Mark was in it. But they did another movie together. Not there that was probably ago. just good Gator money. needs his cat. Gator's bitches better be using Jimmy's. <laughs> oh, is he used to be a pimp? <laughs> and is this the movie where Will Ferrell did the basketball scene where he hits the cheerleader or something? Or is that a different movie? I don't remember that scene. I think that might be a different movie. Well, there is a basketball scene in it. Because I'm reading that online. But I know in one of his movies, they actually went to a basketball game and during halftime shot that scene mm-hmm. with everyone in the audience there. So, like, the rea- the reaction was real, real and shit. But I remember hearing about it the next day because they didn't mention that it was for a movie. They were just like, Will Ferrell was... Doing this at a basketball game. I think I've only seen it a couple times. You know what? I'm going to hang on to that wooden gun. To give me back my real gun? No. I'm going to give you this. It's a rape whistle. You blow this if you're in any trouble. And someone with an actual gun will come and help you out. (laughs) Oh, it's too funny. Um, good choice good pull good yeah pull. I, I thought so there's a lot of classic fucking lines in that which we could spend lots of time going over but well it's Will Ferrell I'm sure there's a whole other three versions of the movie with different lines <laughs> and jokes this meal is terrible it tastes like roasted dog asshole I asked myself who would slow roast a dog's asshole asshole and feed it to me you would <laughs> alright bye Jenny <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Your farts aren't manly. Are you serious? They sound like a baby blowing up birthday candles. <laughs> what is this? It's my car. It's a Prius. It feels like we're literally driving around in a vagina. <laughs> Alright, shake your dicks. This pissing contest is over. <laughs> oh, man. Alright. Too pull. many, too many good lines. If you haven't seen that, fucking go watch it. What are you Do doing? it. Beardo, number two? Number one. One? He took my number two. Oh. Which one was that? Hot Fuzz. <laughs> you really? You'd pick that? You know it's going to be on his I list. Know. <laughs> I know. I know. I thought it would be higher up on Yeah, his. well, you thought wrong. <laughs> what, True Lies? It's <laughs> a buddy cop film, though. What? Why, is that what you put? No. 
<laughs> if that was a buddy cop film, that would have been my first one, but he does he's not really with anyone throughout the film. No, but he still isn't Tom Arnold his partner. Yeah, but they need to be together okay, throughout the okay. film. Like just it can't okay. be like Tom Arnold's in it for like five minutes. They're the greatest five minutes of the movie, yeah. but <laughs> No, my number one See Steven. that's what another idea for part two could have been Tom more Tom Arnold. But that's a whole episode of me. I, I've got a whole idea for a True Lies too. But all right, what you one. choose? Do you have to ask? Drum roll. <laughs> Lethal weapon. Which one? Do I have to pick? Yep. One. Which one's your favorite? <sighs> Number two. You sure? Oh man. I can't even really give you shit because I've only. Scene. Oh, shame no. on yeah, you. Yeah, number two is my not favorite. Not enough right. to remember which one's which. Diplomatic which immunity. I'm sorry. It's oh. just been revoked. His neck actually cracked when he did that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't have much of an input here. Like I said, I've, I've probably seen them, but not enough to... But enough, enough so to bring shame onto myself, and I'm probably going to get hated on. If, if anyone feels like commenting and... Leaving me some shit. Riggs! <laughs> I just love the first one because you see that giant cell phone. But you said the second one, so. What year did the second one? 89 was yeah, the second the one. the first one came out in 86, right? I believe so. Uh, 89. Um, second one, do you remember what it was about? Yeah, Germans. <laughs> and the Germans. The, the Germans with the diplomatic immunity. That they can do whatever they want. Well, yeah, there's smugglers or something going on Some, throughout yeah. everything. <coughs> South African smugglers find themselves being hounded and harassed by Riggs and Murtaugh, two mismatched Los Angeles police officers. That's a buddy cop and film right there. Yeah, and they start killing off a bunch of cops one at a time. and Yeah. However, Murtaugh. the South Africans are protected by diplomatic immunity, so the two are assigned to witness protection duty in an attempt by their captain to keep his job is the only one this witness reveals to them that he has already dealt with the smugglers, that the trouble really starts. And Good old Joe Pesci. <laughs> and I was Leo just going to say, that's one of my favorite characters, is Leo Getz. Mm -hmm. Mouth of, like, a thousand words a minute. Even though... <laughs> He's almost, I'm not saying that I don't like him, but he's kind of like the Jar Jar Binks of the series. And I, I'm kind of curious where, like, because Shane Black wrote the first one and he actually had a script for the second one, but it was too dark and they changed it. Mm -hmm. I would have been interested to see his take on it, though. Yeah. Because I'm sure it still had the same, like, drug smuggling shit in it. Mm -hmm. Well, the first movie is dark. Oh, yeah. I love the I first love movie. I love the first movie, but... The second one, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Joss Ackland plays the bad guy. And that's Hans from The Mighty Ducks. Yeah, right. <laughs> the Mighty Ducks. I love those movies. Uh, he bangs a hot chick in his trailer. As you do. Not Both. Hans. He's talking about... <laughs> yeah. He's talking about... Not uh, Hans. Good old Riggs. M Mel Gibson. I think this is actually the w the lethal weapon that I always see one goof in the movie. There's one part where... Because there's a part where they're on the boat, right? And Riggs is taking everyone out. On a boat? Yeah. I don't think so. You oh, sure? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, At the end. Know. It's Drug like smuggling. a freight boat. Yeah. yeah. And he's pretty much taking everyone out with a machine gun. He gets to one guy, and it pans to the guy, and he Riggs starts shooting him, and the holes are like covering his chest, like boom, 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 red, red, blood, blood, blood. And then it points to Riggs, and then it points back to the guy, and there's no holes on his <laughs> chest. It's just a clean shirt, and he like slides down the wall. <laughs> like how? How did you do that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I still don't you have an really input. You really gotta watch I'm sorry. Them, so still don't have an input. <laughs> They're such good movies. Yeah, there's four of them in total. Uh, 
It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. They made, like, their own spoof. Oh, really? For Lethal Weapon. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm really. And apparently, there's a TV show. The they made a TV show or series, Lethal yeah. Weapon. Yeah, it's some probably... guy in uh, Damon Wayans is playing Murdoch. Yeah, I'm not big on those kind of TV shows. They even made a Rush Hour one. Yeah, not gonna put any time into that. Cause no, it's gonna just go watch just put the a movies. sour taste in my mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because well, if the they first did with it, classic though. If they did with that show mm-hmm. what they did with Rush Hour and just copied the movie pretty much scene for scene, then no. Uh, it's what's like the point. Well yeah, exactly. I think it should more just be like there are other missions that you don't see or just make up make two up new a new cops. Fucking show. Yeah, no, let's just put a movie title on it. That'll get some people watching it. Nope. Ah come on people. All you have to do is change the names. Change the names. That's and all then you just gotta... be like that's it. You can't sue me. The third There's lethal weapon. two people who are getting together. Had uh, those bullets that could pierce through armor. Yeah. That was the big thing in that. Then the fourth one was martial With arts. With the triads, yeah. yeah. Jet Li and counterfeit money. Yes. I think I saw that one in theaters. Yeah. Because that was like later 90s. That was yeah. a, I think that was around the time of Rush Hour, actually. Mm-hmm. Chris Rock was in it. Yeah, he played the boyfriend of his daughter, slash he's one of the new cops at the station. Yeah. Right, Allie? Right, right, right. Sure. Should, should we move on so that Allie stays mm-hmm. awake? Oh, hey, I, I'm here. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm just I, kidding. Um, so let's, let's hit your number two, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Bloop. I'm going to go with Kyle's favorite movie of this franchise. He always fucking bugs me to watch it, but... Chocolate milk. Die Hard with a Vengeance. <laughs> I don't even consider that Die Hard. How? <laughs> I'm, we won't get into it because you're wrong, so... <laughs> Actually, we've brought this up before, but the script for this movie was originally supposed to be like a Lethal Weapon movie. We have brought up that before, and I think we've brought it up before that I haven't seen this movie. You want to make some more noise? I'm sorry. Let me get a soccer ball you can kick (laughs) around a little bit. (laughs) Ole. Oh, man, you, you haven't seen a lot of good movies. I know, right? I know. I'm sorry. You know me, I'm really into my comedies and stuff like that, and it takes me a while to watch some of the old action movies. I apologize. It's okay. We grew up on They are kind of not force-fed to us, but they no, were but they, they were, were definitely there. your guy's thing yeah. back in the day. So the first... This is the second movie in the Die Hard series. Yeah. And after... No, sorry, third. Third, right? Third one, yeah. Yeah. Third? Oh, okay. Third. I always get Let's it mixed up because there's no Second number. Second one is the one with the plane. Okay. In the airport. I just always get it mixed up because this story pretty much continues from the first movie. I won't go into too much detail because I, I won't spoil for him in case he does watch it. But there's no number in the title either. It's just Die Hard with a Vengeance. So I always forget there's the second one because I don't like the second one. So poo on you. <laughs> cool on you. Although, if, if <laughs> better than a vengeance. Nah, we're not gonna get into it, man. It's okay. You could get into it. We Be could. We could. But we're at the hour mark, and we've got more to say. So <laughs> maybe we'll have a mini sode of just us going at it. Nah. Or maybe we maybe. can have a mini sode of. Uh, is there a subtitle, or is it just Die Hard Two? Die Harder or something, isn't it? I don't even. I can't even. Think we'll have, we'll have a little know. little battle between Die Hard 2 die and Die Hard, die hard die 3. Harder. They usually have a little uh, yeah. title like that. So, this one finds Detective John McClane, Bruce Willis, yeah. back in New York, because he's in L.A. or something in the first one. He goes On somewhere else. West Coast. And he's actually supposed to be on vacation, but there's this bad guy phoning the police station 
playing the Simon Says game and blowing shit up, and I believe he demands that John McClane come on the case. For killing his brother. And one of the Simon Says things that he first tells McClane to do is to go into Harlem. I'm pretty sure it's Harlem. Wearing a sign... Oh, what does it say? Something to do with the N-word. And n- nothing good. No. So he has to walk around with that, like a big like wooden sign with straps around his shoulders. And one of the people that sees it is a shop owner who is played by Samuel Jackson... Who comes out and is like, you know what the fuck, you know where you are and all that shit, motherfucker? And uh, Bruce Willis is like, yeah, it's like, I think he fills him in eventually. And Samuel Jackson becomes his buddy cop, pretty much. And the whole movie is them being chased around the city from the Simon Says guy, like, disarming bombs and shit. And then there's, like, a big twist at the end that I won't let, I won't tell you in case you watch them all. But yeah, it's, it's a, and I consider it a diehard movie because the newest two, which a lot of people don't like, but I still enjoyed, are pretty much taken from that. They're just chase movies. And I kind of like that because the first two movies, he's kind of stuck in one place and this just kind of expanded it to like, well, how can we make him more action? Well, how about we make him go places? <laughs> As opposed to being stuck in places. Yeah, great movie. Good one. It's good. It's good. It's good. You know what else is good? What else is good? A little promo break. It is. All right, Let's do so it. we shall be back. Enjoy these promos from some of our Potter and family. All right, let's do it. Your guide to cinema etiquette for the Countdown Movie and TV Reviews podcast. Question 17. When choosing a seat at a largely empty movie cinema, do you... A. Sit directly in front of another person. B. Sit right alongside a couple clearly enamored with one another. Or C. Take a seat away from other patrons that afford you a good you. If you answered A or B, fuck you! For more useful cinema etiquette, join Paul and Wayne on the Countdown Movie and TV Reviews podcast at Podomatic on iTunes or your favourite podcast app. Hi, I'm Mark James from the popular Poop Culture Podcast. I'm here today to talk to you about a serious matter millions of Americans struggle with each and every day. Do you suffer from a moderate to severe disinterest in life? Have you or a loved one been diagnosed with social perplexia, a general knowledge deficiency? Then Poop Culture, with all the snatch them in, may be right for you. The Poop Culture Podcast gives you your minimum daily required allowance of popular culture, comedy, and general tomfoolery. Please operate heavy machinery while listening to Poop Culture. If you achieve an erection lasting more than four hours, then good for you. Side effects may include, but are not limited to, nausea, diarrhea, general sense of euphoria, hallucinations, side and stomach cramps, social gaping, anal leakage, and dry mouth. Listen to the Poop Culture Podcast and gain the confidence you need to relate to people once again. No need to ask your doctor because Poop Culture is right for you. Poop Culture, yeah, it's a Poop Culture. What's up, guys? This is Epic Film Guy Nick here, and I just want to take a few moments to tell you about an excellent podcast that I personally listen to called Ice and the Face. All right, now, if you're a fan of dystopian and even nihilistic comedy, this is the show for you. Rick and Sarah take the most ridiculous news items in the world every single week, and they just tear these stories down, all while having a great, great laugh. They're usually joined by guests who jump right in on the fun, and it's just a great time. They just launched a Patreon over at patreon.com slash ice in the face, so you can also support them. But if you're not listening to this show, what you need to do is go to their website at iceintheface.com or jump over on your favorite podcasting app and subscribe to Ice in the Face. I promise you'll listen for two minutes and you will be hooked just like I am. So go ahead and give it a listen and back to your regularly scheduled program. 
Welcome back, nerds, geeks, freaks, and internet peeps. I think we are on to our numero uno, the yep. big cheese. So I think it is Alistair's turn. All right. Well then, my I guess it is my number one because Beard took my rush hour. Ah. Uh, um, okay. Twenty one Jump Street. Have not seen it. Two thousand twelve. Really? Oh, mm-hmm. good you movie. Really man. enjoy this movie. Seriously. Well, it stars two people that I really can't stand, so it's going to be no, very hard. No, you'd really, like, do you not like Superbad? Really? It's okay. I mean, everybody, I, I honestly did not see that movie until, like, two years after it came out. Oh. Like, all right, it's been two years. I, I watch guess that movie, like, once a year because it's so fucking jokes. So that funny. That could almost be, like, considered, it's, it's like half a buddy cop movie with uh, Hagger and... Uh, What's his name? Is it Hager and Seth Rogen? There's just like the cops during it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like half a buddy cop movie. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, no, 21 Jump Street, uh, Jonah Hill, Channing Tatum, fresh and new to the police academy world, or the police world, and they get put into the 21 Jump Street, um, what would you call it? Sector. Yeah. <laughs> division. We'll go with Division. Let's go with Division. And then you got uh, Ice Cube as the chief stereotypical chief. hard-ass chief. He is quite the hard-ass. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you know, telling you guys are all here because you some Justin Bieber and Miley Cyrus looking motherfuckers. And throws them right into the high school to try and infiltrate the dealer. Find the, or no. Find the supplier, infiltrate the dealer. I don't know, either one of like that. Um, they basically have to find the main drug dealer. Yeah, in the exactly. High school. They, it's like a new synthetic drug that's out there being created by someone in the school or someone you know in the community. Ends up being the uh, gym teacher. I always forget that guy's name. I don't even know if I ever knew. He's it. pretty funny. He's in. Uh, he's in the other guys as well. Yeah. Um, You're right. I am. Him and James Franco's little brother are the uh, supplier and the dealer. So then they... And they get thrown off because when they first get to the high school, they think uh, Channing Tatum's going to be popular. But... Yeah, but it ends up being a uh, switch because he's trying to go there being the exact same as he was in high school and times have changed. They're like, going like, all right, there's the cool kids, they're the popular kids. What the fuck are those kids? Like, who, who, what is going on here? Goes up. Oh, this guy's doing his homework. That's fucking gay. What? Like, you're, you're ragging on me for being gay? Oh, and then just punches him in the face. It's like, what the fuck is going on with you, man? And, of course, the original 21 Jump Street. Yeah. Pair make an appearance at the end, which is Johnny Depp, and I don't know who the other one was. Uh, I don't remember. My mom would know. She... We saw that in theaters because she was excited to see it. I think she might just want to see anything with Channing <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. She's very much like Beard. <laughs> yeah, that's one of your favorites, isn't it, Beardo? Oh, yeah. Well, he's got the special edition of both the Magic Mics. Oh, yeah. Comes with its own man thong. <laughs> Velcro. Yeah. Have you seen 22 Jump Street? I have. Um, I've only seen it once, I think. I heard it was good. It, it was good. And then at the end, it does like a whole, like a parody thing of like 23 Drum Street, 25 Drum Street, 25, and just shows them doing like a whole bunch of different things. It's like a, just a, uh, um, a video cover pretty much, or a movie pick, poster of each, you know, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th Jump Street. It looks pretty jokes. Well, I wish that the rumors were true about the 23 Jump Street slash Men in Black movie. <laughs> the MIB 23. But if they didn't get like Will Smith or Tommy Lee Jones, then it might not have been that great. That's what I mean. I think that it's a funny idea to think about, but to actually pull it off right, it would have taken... Even a cartoon would be funny. Like a cartoon movie, like they do with the Batman 66. Yeah, that'd be cool too. I'd watch that shit. It'd be funny. But yeah, no, you guys should definitely watch 22 Jump Street. Well, Beard, you haven't even seen 21 Jump Street. And I think you should give it a shot. Uh, it's pretty funny. It's, it's pretty funny. Jonah Hill is hilarious. Um... Ice Cube just tearing them apart the entire time. Jonah Hill trying to pray to Korean Jesus and 
<laughs> Stop fucking around with Korean Jesus. He's got Korean shit to work, uh, worry about. Yeah. Those are really funny movies. They're, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Um, yeah, I guess that's my... That's your number, number one. one. I could probably pull another one out of the bag, but well, we'll I guess we're going to do our runner-up list. So, Beard, Which will you're probably done. be the other few... You're done? Kaput? Yeah. yeah. He's done. He's kaput. So he what was your number one? Fuzz. Lethal Weapon was my number one. Good choice, my friend. Thank you. Good choice. So now we're on my number one. Beard went with Lethal Weapon 2. I'm going with Lethal Weapon 1. <laughs> I was going to wow. go with two. That's why I asked you, you sure? You're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but the first one is Well, I was just saying them as, I was just looking at it as a whole, as a series, but yeah. Well, that was kind of my plan all along. Like, if anyone had anything else that was on my list. Oh, wait, someone had, re- well, no, the first movie, yeah. Mm-hmm. I assumed Lethal Weapon would be your first choice, Mm -hmm. so I kind of planned ahead to ask you that. Yeah. And the second one's good. Him pulling down the house with his truck. Oh, don't get me wrong. The second one, I was going to go for that, Mm -hmm. but I love the first one just as much. Yeah. Yeah, Um, I think it portrays the characters really well. Hey, you can't be here. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus, it sounded like a real gun, man. Uh, I know. Can't scare people like Feel that. Feel the bullet holes in me. Uh, so the first one is when they first meet. Uh, veteran policeman Murtaugh, or Murtaugh, right? Murtaugh. Murtaugh. Is partner with a younger suicidal officer, Riggs, which is Mel Gibson. With and a stunning, not quite mullet, but a very. It's like a. Poofy, um, it's like an mullet. 80s hockey player yeah. <laughs> when they take off their helmet and they kind of yeah. shake all the. Sweat out and it just kind of poofs, yeah. feathers out almost into kind of a mullet. Mm-hmm. It's like a grown out mullet. And Daniel Glover is Murtaugh, and he's too old for this shit, but he keeps going strong for four I'm movies. Too old for this shit. <laughs> and they, BC. it ends up being drug smog- smugglers that are the smog- bad guys. Mm-hmm. Smog- 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 <laughs> But, uh... Albino freak. <laughs> Murtaugh is actually kind of connected to it because he was in the army, I think, of yeah. the father of the first murder victim who is on some of the drugs. And it's just got a lot of iconic scenes in it, like the part where they're going to Daisy's house and that little group of kids starts pestering them. Mm-hmm. That's used every, like, so... In so many places in pop culture... I actually remember having the Mad Magazine that came out not long after this was released. Mm-hmm. So I think my uncle had it, and they parry parody that part. So I think one of the they kids parry had, like, that part. Remember the glasses that Biff's uh, sidekick wears? Yeah. Didn't one of the kids have line, something I'm like that? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Meh. 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 Don't tell them your name, Kevin. <gasps> And the fight scene, <laughs> and the fight scene at the end between uh, Mel Gibson and Gary Busey, uh-huh. so good I when they're just that. beating like, the crap out of each other on uh, let me help Murtaugh. You. No, <laughs> back off, he's mine. <laughs> yeah, Mel Gibson is loco in that movie. <laughs> you really are crazy. I really should invest my time in these movies. Huh? They're good movies, man. And he dislocates his shoulder, and all he does is like. Oh yeah, he slams it against it. The, yeah, see, something. I've seen parts of these movies. I just, like I said, I can't mm-hmm. fluently put them all together. The and that you know that Japanese or Chinese guy that you see in all action movies. Yeah, he's like yeah. a, he's in it, and he's like torturing and shocking him with like oh, electricity. Yeah. He's got like a car battery and shit, and then just fucking like. Kicks his legs Typical over action. and like breaks his neck. Oh man, it's the best. <laughs> Gotta the watch best. it. All right, I'll watch him. I'll fucking watch him. Anything else you want to say about this movie, Brandon? I know you got uh, a little bit of trivia about each movie. I don't know. I think that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've done it's pretty good movie. for time. Yeah, it's pretty good. We're we gonna still go got some over runner some up here. runner ups. Some Run- runner ups. 
the movie from, uh, uh, the movie Loaded Weapon. That's a huge parody of these Lethal Weapon movies. Well, yeah, that had uh, Emilio, Emilio. Yeah. and um, none other than well, was this, yeah, it was Samuel, Samuel Jackson. Jackson. That's actually, uh, I believe, Kyle Sharon. I think that's one of his favorite movies because yeah. he got me. He bar- he let me borrow it one time. And he was like, "If you like Lethal Weapon, you got to watch this. It just parodies it." I don't know if I actually Especially watched it. Especially the not, third though. one, because that's the one that had what's her name, Gina. It, no, that's not Gina Davis. I don't remember her name. But when they're comparing all the scars and oh yeah, I remember oh in this battle and bullet she beca- through and through the girl who she becomes his wife, yeah. like his new wife, because yeah. she's in part four too, right? Yeah. yeah. You'll no, see. No idea. You'll see. I shall see. And yeah. actually, Danny Glover, speaking of Predator 2 at the beginning of the show, we actually meant to do this. We were foreshadowing. We're fancy like that. Let's not go crazy. I know. Danny Glover <laughs> and Gary Bu- Bu- Busey. Busey. Is it Busey? Yeah, and both. Gary and Bussey. And they end up having a little bit of a showdown. Mm-hmm. Ah. There you go. There's your little fact. Okay, thanks. I'll watch these movies. So the I don't get hated on more. Oh, Runner Ups. Tango and Cash was one on mine. I have to see that. I've seen that. I have to see that. Did you have any Runner Ups? Oh, uh, it's a couple point of break. The Bell Girls. The Bell Girls. The Pink, Pink Panther. Panther. Pink right? Panther, yeah. Didn't really think of it until we were kind of halfway through here. I'm um, in Cop and a Half. I'm in Ponton. I love Cop and a Half. Cop and a Half? Which one is that? That's the one with, uh... Hmm. I, I don't know if I ever saw it. <laughs> Burt Reynolds, and it has the little black kid in it. Oh, yeah. It's an old movie. I think I saw that on TV once. Mm-hmm. TV. TV. Um, TV. I, know, I just, I like it from when I was a kid especially, but I'd even watch it now. I think it holds up, but the little kid in that, like, some of the moments are so hilarious, like... Starsky and Hutch. Yeah, I love that Starsky movie. and Hutch. Um, I was gonna say Red, but like that one's kind of hard because they're yeah, it's all like a team up. It's all it's a team up, and they're all ex. Yeah, they're ex all black pretty ops much and the stuff same. like Did that. Did you ever see Red Heat? No, no. I remember watching that with my dad one time. It was actually kind of good, and I was like, "It's an Arnold movie. How have I not seen it?" But I. It's an def- old Arnold movie. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, because he's teamed up with uh, it's, uh, one of the Belushi's, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like you said, the list was kind of weird because there's only so many real buddy cop films. So Double Team uh, we need with uh, John claude Van Damme and oh, Dennis yeah, and Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Um, Beverly Hills Cop. That's a good series. 48 Hours. 48 Hours, good. And actually, There's not a whole hell of a I, lot. I never saw the first one, but I do recall the second one when it came out. Um, only because I guess What's-Her-Name was in it. But uh, what was that, Stakeout or whatever? With, uh, I think I saw that once. That's Martin Lawrence, isn't it? Not Martin Lawrence. Uh, who's that? <laughs> I can't remember. I don't. I think I may have Richard seen that Richard Dreyfuss was in it. Uh, Bad Boys are some other good ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, I'm surprised that didn't make our list. If Honestly, if I would have spent more than an hour putting this list together, I think those that would have been on my list. Um, so yeah, I love old Will Smith movies. Will Smith, um, Martin Lawrence together. It was a pretty good pairing. I've got a couple lists from some listeners and some participants. Do we? Sweet. Uh, Netflix and Swill podcast, who we promoted on our last episode, says, in no particular order, The Nice Guys, Rush Hour, Sherlock Holmes, Bad Boys 2, Die Hard with a Vengeance, and Men in Black. Nice. Good Sherlock call. Holmes were, those are yeah. some good those ones. Those are, yeah. yeah. I didn't think of those. No, not at all. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I didn't see those on any other lists. Nice. Good list. Who else we got? Who Spiked the Puns? Another mm. podcast. You can find them at Spike the Puns. And you can find Netflix and Swill at Netflix and Swill. 
Good question. Tango and Cash, Bad Boys, The Rookie, Renegades, Lethal Weapon, Metal. It's M with the two slashes. Oh, I gotcha, gotcha. Right on. Some movies there that I definitely haven't seen. The Rookie. That's not surprising with me, apparently. The Rookie. Um, what was the other one you said? Wait, the rookie. Is that... Renegade. See, when I hear rookie, I think rookie of the year, because, you know... I think I remember seeing that when I was looking up this list. Alright, I think I'm finding the wrong movie, because this says a true story about a coach who discovers that it's never too late for dreams to come true. It's not very buddy cop... Oh, wait, no, there's another movie with Clint Eastwood in it, so I think that might be what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh! Clint Eastwood plays a veteran detective who gets stuck with a rookie cop, Charlie Sheen, to chase down a German crook. I think I saw that when I was younger. I recognized the cover for sure. Good choices. Yeah, right on. Uh, I think I got a couple more. Cinema Psycho Show, you can find them at... Psycho's Show, Lethal Weapon, The Other Guys, Dragnet, the movie, 21 Jump Street, and Last Action Hero. Those are some damn fine choices. Absolutely. Society's Basement, Rush Hour 2. Do space cops count? (laughs) Because all three men in black. (laughs) And last but not least, Epic Film Guy Nick. He says Lethal Weapon, Lethal Weapon 2. Lethal Weapon 3, <laughs> Lethal Weapon 4, and The Nice Guys. <laughs> That's another great one, The Nice Guys, that just came out. Which is also by Shane Black, who we talk about a lot, who also mm-hmm. did the first Lethal Weapon. Yeah. Right. There you go. Right on. There you go. And he says, I'm not the biggest fan of Shane Black, but dude creates some kick-ass buddy cop duos. That he does, Nick. That, that he, he does. does. <laughs> <laughs> Any more little shout-outs there? I think that's more, about uh, it. No? Any more I asked. I asked the peeps on the uh, Facebook, but no one likes me. <laughs> well, I'm back See, in town. Uh, yeah, thanks. At least you noticed it, too. <laughs> as soon as I, I Allie... I ask co-workers As soon as Allie posts... Stuff. I always post stuff as Basement Condition on the Basement Condition Facebook page, but then Allie will share it, and that's where all the comments <laughs> will go. Uh, I've got... Yeah, there's, I'm like not complaining. Comment. It's funny. At least because at least there's comments. Yeah. Right? Basement condition, basement condition alley. Oh well, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, no, this list was uh, was a lot of fun. It's thank you for this being the list to come back to because it was pretty easy to throw a list together as opposed to stressing yeah. about it. Yeah, <laughs> none of the buddy cop animal movies came up though. Uh, yeah, but that's kind of like a subgenre. Yeah, it could be its own genre. And they're not genre. that much fun. Stop or my mom will shoot. Ah, oh, I forgot about that How one. How can we forget? Sylvester Stallone, and for some weird reason, I forget why, but he gets paired up with his mom, just who is played stay, by... has to stay with him, and she just starts interfering with But she's with like a, a hard ass. Okay. But like a sweet old lady. She, um... You probably don't watch it. I've never watched it, but you know what the Golden Girls are? Oh yeah, those three old ladies, the young, the short little one. Yeah, the yeah. Oh, isn't that the mom? I can't. I think so. I'm but pretty I could be sure wrong. that's the mom. If I'm wrong, leave a comment on Basement Condition at Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just blew a booger out of my nose. Ah, <laughs> uh, good times. Oh dear. Um, we're not gonna be reaching into Batman today. Because we are going to be having some Halloween episodes over the next couple of weeks. Next week, we will be featuring me and Beard's, Beard and I's cousin, Mike, who pretty much lives for Halloween. Got us into horror movies. and While other kids were growing up with Disney and other movies, he was growing up with horror and slashers and... Hey, Brandon, want to watch this movie? Yeah, sure. And it's like Child's Play or Leprechaun. I'm like four. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But yeah, he's going to be on the show. Uh, We're going to do top five slasher films. And Monday, we will be talking about some Halloween discussion, like Halloween topics, probably 
the way horror films have changed over the years and what we think about it and if they've gotten good or bad, etc. But I'm sure we'll just rant and rave about sh- Halloween shit with mm-hmm. him here. Because I'm sure Come he'll on, just go over, over it. The Halloween thing. And by then, Kyle's going to have another kid. Yes. Very exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. Another thing to be excited of, about for this month of October. It is. There we go. It's an exciting month. And what did you exciting. name the little thing? Elias. 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 And why were you happy about that? Oh, well, for the most part, it was... Oh, come it on. It came up that Casey Jones, the actor from Casey Jones, his name's Elias Codius or whatever, but that name just always kind of stuck with me. Oh, I thought just Jess... Well, Jess likes it too, but it's I guess it's the comic book hero... I know, but you, you know that that is what helps. It's Casey Jones, yeah. <laughs> you can't say... Oh yeah, my first son is Logan after my favorite X-Men. <laughs> and then after my favorite Ninja Turtle character. No, that's just a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah you we, love it. That'll be very exciting. And you know you're going to dress him up as Casey Jones one, yeah, <laughs> one <yeah>. Halloween. <laughs> very exciting See, that's for you. the year you got to dress Logan <laughs> up as Wolverine again and him yeah. as Casey Jones. Yeah. Be great. People may not get the Casey Jones reference, but and then, then that's when you go. go with that's my how hard trench court. coat and shovel, and <laughs> there you go. <laughs> People won't get the Casey Jones reference, and that's when you go. That's why I'm the nerd. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think it's about time to get that package ready, and we're gonna wrap it up. And a nice, neat little package. Neatly. That's how you do it. That's, that's how, how you do it. He's he's making some obscure hand gestures here. I am. Not really, though. Um, if you enjoyed the episode, please leave a wee little review. Show us some loving. It really helps us out. If not, you're still awesome. You can do that on iTunes, but you can also find us on SoundCloud, Twitcher, Google Play, and also Facebook and Twitter. You guys good? I'm Say good. goodbye to everyone. Goodbye, goodbye peeps. everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Glad to be back. I'll see you on the next episode of Basement Condition. So later days, and as always, stay mint. mint. Today's episode is brought to you by the Be Real Podcasting Network. For more episodes like this, check out BREELnetwork.com. Fatality.